have included his Bill 20 into Bill 19, but Senator Dennis Rodriguez Jr. is still concerned about what went down during session Monday. There was an amendment that was moved and, and eventually passed um, that um, um, you know referenced an exhibit um, during the um, when the mover first placed this uh, motion before the senators, I objected to it because there wasn't any exhibit in in the floor amendment that I you know that I introduced into Bill 19. While he and others raised objection, the bill still went forward and up for a vote. The amendment proffered by Senator Ben Pangilinan says once vendor payments are exhausted pursuant to quote Exhibit A, all taxes imposed and the authority to license gaming machines will be repealed. Senator Michael Sinicholas took it a step further by introducing his own amendment to the amendment. What it basically does is as soon as the hospital's debts are paid off, it will sunset all gaming on the island. So now we have a pseudo timetable in place when we're going to be putting an end to all gaming on Guam. In addition to the Pangalinan Amendment, Rodriguez along with Senators Tina Munir Barnes, Rory Respicio, Tony Atta, Aline Yamashita and Brant McCready, who in a joint statement say they're concerned about the long-term effects of the Sinicholas Amendment. And that's very dangerous because number one, when we talk about we want to be open and transparent with our people, what that amendment did was shut the door. Um, because there's nonprofits. He further says the path to block Bill 20 led to opponents coming up with a flawed amendment. And while Pangolinan has not returned KUAM's repeated calls for comment, Sir Nicholas says the votes on the measure as a whole speak for itself. All 15 senators voted yes on the bill. So they either didn't know what they were doing or they know very much what they're doing now by taking those different positions. And uh, as for me, I'm just going to continue to remain consistent. He adds the community has spoken against gambling five times over initiatives placed on the ballot. And while concern over banning cockfighting, bingo, raffles, and other activities supported by nonprofits have been raised, he believes in the ingenuity of our people. I believe that uh, the money hasn't gone away in terms of those fundraising opportunities. We just need to be a little more um, creative in how we're going to go out and raise money. Rodriguez, meanwhile, says the language in the Pangolinan Amendment essentially legalizes the entire limited gaming industry on Guam. He has the upside to Bill 19. Its funding will be provided to the Guam Memorial Hospital. I don't agree with provisions that were passed in Bill 19 um, in terms of taxing nonprofits. I don't think you could tax any nonprofits, but you know, be that as it may, um, there's provisions in there that would help the hospital today, and that's the whole intent, is to get the hospital the help that it needs. He adds it's now up to the legislature to look at identifying how to remedy the problems possibly created by the Pangolin and St. Nicholas Amendment. Keep Guam Goods' Jay Ariola, meanwhile, says they watched the debate with disbelief, saying session was filled with, quote, backroom deals, wheeling and dealing, political rhetoric, and posturing of senators who tried to legalize gaming machines in Guam under the guise of helping GMH, end quote. They further acknowledged the eight who voted on the amendment to ban all forms of gambling in Guam. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Ken Quintaniza.